In this problem, we are asked to find the direction in which the maximum rate of the change of function f occurs at the point 1, 0. You need to understand that we are talking about the gradient. In general, the rate of change is talking about some kind of derivatives, right? But in multidimensional analysis or calculus, we have many derivatives. So that is why we're talking about gradient, because gradient collects all the partial derivatives with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z, m, t, and so on. Here is a reminder for you what gradient means. Gradient collects partial derivatives, and it is a vector operation which operates on a scalar function to produce a vector, those magnitudes, the maximum of the vector will give you the maximum rate of the function. And then at the point of the gradient, and it will point to the direction of the maximum rate of change. So we ask to find the last one. So I like explaining it this way. When you have a 3D map of the mountain, so it's 3D, here it is, and you are hiking, first of all, it makes an important point to know where do you start the hike. If you was dropped over here, then what will be the maximum rate of change that will be not only the gradient will tell you okay this is the uh, maximum rate of change but the size of the gradient will tell you how extreme the change is that's the magnitude of the gradient vector if he was dropped over here maybe it will look like this and so on that's exactly what i'm talking here you take partial derivative with respect to one direction second direction third direction collect them all together and that will point to the direction of the maximum rate of change. That's the most important application of the gradient. And the size of that vector, the gradient, the magnitude of the, um, the, magnitude of the gradient will give you that maximum rate of change. So it tells you hike over there if you want the hardest hike. And this is how long your hike is going to be. Solution is actually easier than the whole explanation. You just need to find the partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y, and then plug the point 1 and 0. You need to use chain rule in this case. Derivative of sine is cosine, copy the function inside, and then times derivative of x, y with respect to x. That gives you y, because y is a constant. Derivative of sine is cosine again, times derivative of the function inside, but this time with respect to y. That gives you x, because x is a constant now. This is chain rule here and here. Now, you just need to write down that the gradient vector will be the collection of those derivatives x times y times y, comma, cosine x times y times x. And then they ask you to check uh, what is direction going to be at the point. What point? They gave you the point. 1, 0, 1, 0. So I'm plugging 1 and 0. And it's going to be cosine of 0 times 0 gives me 0. Cosine of 0 times 1 gives me 1 because cosine of 0 is 1. And that is the answer. So the magnitude of this gradient gives you the uh, maximum rate of change. But the gradient at the point gives you the direction of the maximum rate of change. And that's what they ask us to find. Since this problem was too short, I have second problem for you where they explicitly ask you to find the gradient. Again, you want to find all partial derivatives and collect them into one vector. So we want to have partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and in this case, with respect to z as well. So that should be fun. The partial derivative with respect to x as you can see, it's a product x squared times e to the y times squared of z, but it will not be a product rule if only x is a variable. Derivative of x squared is 2x, and then e to the y times squared of z is just a constant when we differentiating with respect to x. Derivative of y, with derivative of the function with respect to y, now e to the y is only variable here. Derivative of e to the y is e to the y, and I can copy everything else because it's a constant multiplied by a variable. The derivative with respect to z has the same idea. x squared and e to the y is a constant, 
square root of z is a function. Derivative of square root of z is 1 over 2 square root of z's. If you don't understand this, carefully uh, recreate a product rule and you will have minus 1 times z to the minus 2, oh, minus 1 half. Okay, wait, I confuse myself with a simple thing. Yes, 1 half multiplied by minus z to the minus 1 half. No negative, z to the minus 1 half. I wanted to write down that this is a constant as well. So this builds the gradient vector. They don't even ask us to plug anything. So I will just write down the gradient vector will be, try to write down everything in order of uh, x, y, z variables. So 2x goes first, e to the y square root of z, comma, x squared e to the y square root of z, comma, x squared e to the y, divided by 2 square root of z it's a point or not no it's a vector so i'll put brackets like these um putting uh, variables in order is an international uh, suggestion but it's not a rule which we require usually but this is my gradient gradient for the given function in this case it was it had three variables so we had to differentiate with respect to x y and z practice more specifically practice partial differentiation and of course practice the meaning understanding the meaning of what the gradient is what the magnitude of the gradient means what the gradient means by itself and what is the direction of the gradient at the point mean because we will be asking all of these questions on our exams Thank you for watching.